Hello YouTube! I know it's been a while. I haven't done a video since August. I decided to take two college classes this semester. I'm on the home stretch. I almost have the degree. And those two classes have just been totally killing my schedule. Plus work, plus everything else. Anyway, so I wanted to say hello and let you guys know what I've been working on. Uh, I picked up a bunch of enclosures because I've been trying to make well, I, I've redone the entire shop, but I really want a big focus on safety, both fire safety, both air quality. And I like the idea of enclosing the printers because I noticed when I have the printers enclosed, I get really good print quality because they're not susceptible to any drafts or any outside atmosphere. So that's uh, one of the things I've been working on. Now, let's start with air quality. So there's a lot of data I've received from the CDC and the EPA and all you gotta do is Google. You can find this stuff as well too. And <laughs> no big surprise, uh, 3D printing is melting polymers and polymers off gas. They put out nanoparticles and VOCs. And guess what? I know, I know. Make sure you're sitting down. These things aren't terribly good for us. Now, we don't know the long-term dangers and exposure. We do know that our pulmonary system pulls the stuff right in. And uh, based on early testing, it's not good. So let's not get black lung from 3D printing. So, <laughs> I mean, years ago, doctors used to recommend cigarettes. They used to use asbestos for snowflakes in movies. Uh, the coal dust used to not be a big deal. Yeah, wrong, 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 wrong. So let's, for me anyway, I want to print safe. I also want excellent print quality. So, so that's what I've been working on. So these enclosures, I picked these up from Printed Solid. Uh, Matter Hackers has them as well too. Uh, this is the next gen CR10 style uh, enclosure. They got a little spot here where they got the humidity level and the temperature inside. And what's neat is they have on the sides here, pre-drilled, uh, you can put a cover plate on here if you're not going to use it, but this is a 60 uh, millimeter uh, diameter hole where you can either put the tubing for say a, B, a BAFA air filtration system or in the case that I'm using, I found 3D Upfitters, they have these carbon air filters. Now this has the adapter plate, this has the fan, it's USB powered, it's using a carbon filter, no HEPA, just carbon. And for $49.95, I figured, hey, this is, this is pretty good. Let's use this because there's a couple other things you could do. Now, I'm in a northern climate, so the idea of running the windows open and getting plenty of fresh air, yeah, that's, that's not going to work for me during the winter time. The other thing you can do is if you uh, tube all these guys up and plug them all in and vent outside, yeah, that's something else you could do. You could use a, you know, a power blower fan, for example, like what your bathroom has to, you know, uh, to get rid of the humidity and steam from your shower. Uh, but that's a fairly expensive endeavor as well, too. Uh, the other thing that I do, I've been doing this for a long time, is I have air purification. So I got a Honeywell over here and I got a Lavoet over here and I have another Honeywell in the corner. So uh, as much as I can, I'm working on several air changes uh, in the shop here whenever I'm 3D printing. So I've been trying to do it right for a long time. The expensive way you can do this is you can get something like a BAFA with like a 3D print uh, clean. Uh, I'm trying to remember what's the name of this thing. 3D Print Pro rather, I'm sorry. And so what's happening here, I got a print underway right now. You can see the orange thing in the back. So what that's doing is it's pulling the air out of the chamber. It goes in through here through a pre-filter and a five stage filter, filters the air and then expels it back into the environment. Now that's pretty cool, but that's also $795 right there. <laughs> so now they make a different model, which what it does is it filters the air and then it returns it back to the chamber. So I'm not constantly pulling hot air out of here and then expelling it into the room. Uh, what I could do with the newer unit is return that warm air, filtered air, back to the chamber. So maybe my heated bed would uh, work a little less hard. So. So that's how I'm attacking the air filtration method. And what I really like about these devices is, especially what uh, being USB powered is really sweet, but the enclosures having it on either side allows me to have these enclosures side by side. So for example, I can have the filtration on one side, have it on the other side, and they're all good. So, and then as you can see, I have this lit up uh, this is just inexpensive Lowe's $19 LED light strips. And the one thing I learned about these light strips, I'm sorry, I keep on moving the camera around here. Uh, the adhesives 
suck. <laughs> so uh, I put it in, uh, I put it on the inside panel here, and the next morning when I came downstairs, uh, it was all laying on the bottom. So quickly discovered that, well, I had some Gorilla Glue uh, double-sided tape, so I redid it with that, and that's, that's worked better. And that's what these three uh, currently have in them. Uh, and then I decided, I remembered with R2-D2, the, uh, the body panels I have, those are two layers of aluminum uh, adhered together using 3M VHB, which stands for very high bond. So I just did another one with using that, and I'm hoping uh, that works better. <laughs> we shall see. So uh, if you decide to get an enclosure and light it up, uh, don't rely on the self-adhesive on there. Um, do something like either you know, a double-sided tape, uh, like Gorilla Glue or VHB or something else. Uh, I was thinking about maybe doing some permanent attachment, you know, screws and, and uh, you know, and holders, but let's see what the tape does. Um, so while we're talking about tape and LEDs, uh, let's talk about the enclosures. So these are, these are made by Printed Solid, and these are using ACM. And as you can see, I'll give you a close-up here. You can see where it's plastic in the middle and metal on each side. It's three millimeters thick. This is essentially what they use for sign board, for signs and posters and such. Um, well, I don't know about posters, but anyway, signs. And uh, when you receive it and you pull the plastic protective coating on the top of it, you know, you'll see that that's you know, what it's intended for. So <clears throat> it's good. Uh, the melamine one that I got two years ago is heavier and thicker, but it's, it's melamine. But uh, so is it any more fireproof? Probably not, but the fact is, you know, we're using it, to it as an enclosure, and it's, I mean, these are, I mean, they go together really nice. It's basically just a T-nut construction. Uh, I like that he's giving you a whole bunch of doors and, and passageways here. So overall, I'm really happy with these things. Now, let's talk about filament. So one of the things that I've struggled with when I dial in my materials is I would see artifacts every now and then. So <clears throat> I was like, well, what am I missing? So what I did is I purchased a Print Dry Pro. So what I'm doing is I am drying my filaments for at least four hours before print, sometimes longer depending on how soon I need to print. And then I also inv invested in these poly boxes. So these are essentially a dry box, and this is what it looks like outside. And on the outside, you get a little gauge here that shows the humidity level. And then it has two uh, roller bearings, so it, ha it can have two rolls side by side. And what I like is the bottom, uh, they came with these giant bags. And it, it, do I have it out here? I don't. Uh, it's a desiccant. So the process is you dry the filament, then you put it inside the dry box. And with all the desiccant in there, it maintains that humidity. And then let me go back to the print that's underway so you'll have a better visual. So here's the setup that I'm doing. So up top, we have the, the dry box where it's maintaining a very low humidity. We're making sure that we're not picking up any moisture in the environment. We have our Capricorn tube going from the dry box into the printer and directly into the direct drive. In this case is the Bontech uh, DDS, the direct drive system. And as you can see, I have some LED failing on me. Aha. But, <clears throat> so anyway, so the reason I show you this is for better quality prints, what I'm doing is I'm trying to make sure the filament is dry. Uh, it's not picking up any moisture during the print or, you know, or, well, yeah, during the print. So, ah, sorry, I should edit this out. But anyway, it's stream of consciousness and this is me. So that's what I'm doing to try to get some better prints. I'm making sure the filament is dry and that while the print is going through, it's not pulling any moisture during the printing process. So doing, doing that reverse bowden seems to be helping. So that's it. So, and <clears throat> let's wrap it up. So we're printing safer. Uh, we're tackling air quality. We wanna make sure we have air filtration. We have the expensive, expensive version and we have the less expensive version. Oh, fire safety. Now, the other thing I wanna to mention to you is I have a bunch of these. I just haven't installed them all yet. These are the automatic fire safety suppression systems by Blaze Cut. And it's essentially, it's a pressurized tube. I can't remember the name of uh, uh, what's in here. It's HFC 227, I think. Yeah, 227, which I don't know. I mean, everyone knows what Halon is, but Halon is not legal anymore. So what happens with that pressurized tube is it's gonna be in the top of the enclosure. If something terrible happens, act of God, whatever, uh, something catches fire on the printer, what happens is eventually the tube is breached by the fire and boom, that high pressure suppression material 
does this magic and with any luck saves your house <laughs> so and it's not super expensive i think that was 150 bucks i know i know some of you guys are gonna be like 150 bucks each but hey what what's your house worth and and further like i said i i know everyone has their opinions about the cdc lately or epa what have you but print safe you know do your research don't take my word for it i'm just a doc i'm just a guy walking around with a 4k camera okay but you know you want to make sure that you know you 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 want to be safe with this stuff okay you don't want to get black lung from 3d printing in the future okay so take that <clears throat> with a grain of salt do your own research but come on we're melting plastic <laughs> we, we knew the honeymoon had to had to end somewhere so so that's what i've been up to i am going to make a better video i swear soon but uh, yeah so this is what i'm up to we're doing the enclosures air safe, uh, air filtration fire safety and i have to get an electrician over here because uh, I need to do electrical safety too. I don't have enough outlets. That's why all these machines can't run at once. So that's it for now. I thank you guys for watching. You guys are awesome. Thanks for your comments. Be sure to give a like if you find my advice useful. Be sure to hit the give thanks. And yeah, that's it. And if you're not a subscriber, become one. So that's it. Remember, this is where nerdy is cool. Print safe, guys. <laughs>